రావు చైర్మన్ అండ్ మేనేజింగ్ డైరెక్టర్ శ్రీ బిభు ప్రసాద్ నాయక్ డైరెక్టర్ ఫైనాన్స్ అండ్ శ్రీ ప్రమోద్ నారంగ్ చీఫ్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఆఫీసర్ అట్ దిస్ మోమెంట్ ఆల్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ లెసన్ ఓన్లీ మోర్ లీటర్ వీ విల్ కండక్ట్ అ క్వశ్చన్ అండ్ ఆన్సర్ సెషన్ at that time if you have a question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad please note this conference is being recorded i would now like to hand over the floor to shri raji mehrotra chairman and managing director thank you and over to you sir oh uh, thank you good afternoon to all of you i am raji mehrotra cmd of rights limited i welcome you all to the investor conference call on rights limited financial results for Q3 FY21 and 9 months of FY21. Hope all of you and your families are keeping well. I have with me our Director of Finance, Mr. D.P. Nayak, and CFO, Mr. Pramod Narang. Rights is a mini Ratna, Category 1, Schedule A, Public Enterprise of the uh, Government of India, and a leading player in transport, consultancy, and engineering sector in India, having diversified services and geographical reach. Now I will briefly take you through the highlights of company's results of Q3 FY21 and then we can open the forum for questions and answers. I hope uh, you all have been able to access the financial results, presentations and press release uploaded on our website as well as the stock exchanges. I will cover the consolidated results first. Consolidated results for Q3 FY21. The results of the company for the quarter remained reasonable uh, within the challenges faced due to COVID-19. Working towards post-pandemic economic growth, we have maintained focus on project execution, sustaining margins, and consolidation of order book. This quarter remained a tough quarter, but we have been able to generate revenue as well as maintain uh, our normal level of margins. I'll now summarize the results on a consolidated basis. And as you know, almost 97% of income is coming from stand alone. So whatever uh, I'm talking here is actually relevant uh, for the stand alone also, although you have details available in the presentation and the uh, numbers already uploaded. Rights total consolidated revenue has decreased to rupees 480 crore as against rupees 663 crore in Q3 FY20. Similarly, operating revenue, that is excluding other income, stands at rupees 449 crore in Q3 FY21 as against rupees 620 crore in Q3 FY20. Decrease in revenue is mainly due to export deliveries not scheduled uh, during this quarter, uh, the impact of which is about 90 crore rupees. 90 crore was there in Q3 FY20. And disruptions in supply chain and restrictions due to pandemic. EBITDA and PET stand at rupees 159 crore and rupees 105 crore against rupees 214 crore and rupees 150 crore respectively in Q3 FY20. Efficient execution and timely implementation of cost control measures helped us in maintaining margins. EBITDA and PET margins are sustained in this quarter and stand at 33.1% and 21.9% respectively against 32.2% and 22.6% in Q3 FY20. I'll cover the performance of segments on a standalone basis. Company achieved a revenue of rupees 244 crore from, uh, from consultancy business, which is down by 14.3% over Q3 FY20 but with margins remaining 45.5% as against 46.5% in Q3 FY20. Leasing revenue stands at rupees 29 crore in Q3 FY21 as against rupees 30 crore in Q3 FY20. So the leasing income has almost reached to pre-COVID level uh, uh, levels with margin of 39.8% improved as against 34% in Q3 FY20. So all the locals uh, you know, which were uh, with us have been placed in service now. There were no export deliveries scheduled for Q3 FY21. However, Q4 FY21 is expected to see export shipments 
the beginning for Sri Lanka and Mozambique. Turnkey revenue during Q3 FY21 stands at Rs 159 crore, which is down by 19.2% against Rs 196 crore in Q3 FY20. Turnkey margins were maintained at 3% as against 3.1% in Q3 FY20. REMC Limited, which is our subsidiary, revenue stands at Rs 17 crore as against Rs 19 crore in the previous quarter of last financial year. Similarly, profit before tax has also decreased to Rs 9 crore as against Rs 10 crore in Q3 FY20. Performance of our subsidiary REMC Limited got impacted due to less uh, traction power requirement by uh, railways during this quarter, but power generation uh, from the windmill has shown significant growth on year on year basis. Consolidated results for nine months of FY21. First nine months of FY21 uh, have remained a challenging period for the company where restrictions and supply chain disruptions due to pandemic adversely affected revenue and profits of the company. Price total consolidated revenue has decreased to Rs 1,356 crore as against Rs 2,120 crore in nine months of FY20. Similarly, operating revenue excluding other income stands at Rs 1,224 crore in nine months of FY21 as against Rs 1,904 crores in nine months of FY20. EBITDA and PET stand at Rs 452 crore and Rs 303 crore respectively in FY21 nine months as against Rs 719 crore and 489 crore respectively of nine months of FY20. However, uh, during this nine month period, Rice has been able to maintain the margins of its business at the normal levels as we used to do in the past. Order book. Company's consolidated order book now stands at Rs 6,534 crore as of December 31st, 2020. The order book provides revenue visibility for two to three years. I believe that the emphasis on infrastructure development in the union budget of 21-22 National Rail Plan and National Infrastructure Pipeline will help to drive the growth of the sector, thus providing us opportunities to achieve double-digit growth in FY22 and beyond. Now we can open the forum for questions and answers, and thank you very much for your kind attention. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and one again. We would like to remind participants that you may press star 1 to ask a question. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one now. The first question is from the line of Rohit Natranjan from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so my first question is more to do with the order inflow part. If I see if, uh, in last one quarter, we, have, we may not have had more than 500 odd crore kind of order inflow. Uh, where exactly are the big ticket numbers going to come? What exactly is the timeline? Which are those projects? If you can gu guide us something on that. Well, uh, 
I think whatever we uh, performed in uh, Q3 has almost been replenished by new orders. But yes, we, uh, it's a continuous process. We keep working for new orders. And it is reasonable to expect that now when the budget has uh, been, uh, say, uh, presented, the new project uh, line has been identified. So it's, it's better to expect, uh, you know, this from uh, Q1 of, uh, say, FY22 uh, onwards. Uh, more meaningful uh, numbers should be appearing. Sir, if you could co quantitatively guide some picture, like this much will be from consultancy, which are those prospect orders? Uh, uh, Roy, it's very difficult to really give a precise uh, uh, number, but I can give you the scenario. Uh, the way uh, new projects are lined up here in railways or metros or highways, almost 35% increase in uh, allocation for railways and highways and almost 20% up for metros is a significant uh, increase than what used to be earlier 15-20% increases. So naturally this opens up a lot of opportunities for the company to uh, try out. Uh, consulting and uh, exports, uh, I think we play a major role in 22. And uh, we uh, believe that it's possible to maintain a reasonable double-digit growth in FY22 uh, turnover. Sure, sir. Uh, on the export part, uh, I understand that we have ha uh, these numbers are not scheduled in Q3. But what could be the quantum of exports you are looking at in Q4? Uh, because earlier we were talking about 400 to 500 crores should be possible in exports in the second half. But now that picture seems to be a little bit uh, difficult. Is that understanding right? Uh, uh, no, no, it, it, there is a spillover of a uh, couple of uh, days or weeks uh, here and there. What has happened that uh, the production which is done by production units of railways has a lot of sub-assemblies uh, purchased from outside. So that is where the disruptions actually hit uh, the, uh, the target of Q3. Most of that is now in order. So Q4, uh, uh, tentatively we have uh, actually booked a ship for 25th February for shipment of first train, uh, uh, time purchase train to uh, Sri Lanka. Similarly, February end, we are trying to book uh, for exports to Mozambique. So uh, I'm very confident that February onwards, we will start shipping out. But uh, uh, yes, there have been uh, delays. It's still, I, I would say between three to maybe 400, or we'll try to still push it uh, higher. Because just production is not enough for booking to exports. It has to actually have a bill of landing. So our effort is that to, to take maximum uh, to the port and uh, book it by 31st March. Most of the orders, except one component for uh, Mozambique, uh, I'll say to give a rough number, almost 1,000 crores of exports are actually in the manufacturing process. So if there is a spillover of one or two, three weeks, uh, I mean, the, the orders remain qualitatively with you. And I, I think that's a very frank uh, update on the export position. Uh, there were delays in sub-assemblies. A lot of sub-assemblies are involved, especially locomotives and the uh, DMUs. Sure, sir. And finally, sir, on the consultancy and construction business, what exactly is the manpower uh, uh, utilization looking like? Because the numbers were softer in this particular quarter. Is there any, uh, you know, quantitative number that you want to put, look at like 80% of the efficiency or some, or uh, it wasn't optimally utilized, some, some picture on that? Uh, yes, two issues I would like to highlight that uh, looking at the, the scenario sometime in uh, April itself, whatever flexibility we had in the uh, organization, we started reducing, uh, you know, the, the job related uh, hiring or the contract hiring. And uh, I think that was a very timely step. So as a result, we could control the cost and the idle manpower, uh, which you can see has been uh, uh, appearing in the margins maintained despite challenge. Uh, if you want exact uh, productivity number, I, we have put it on slide 19 in the presentation, which is uploaded. So we ended December with total 3,005 people against, you know, last year's 3,286. So we are down by almost 281 uh, numbers. So obviously, uh, th th this cost has been controlled well, which is also uh, visible in the operating expenses. Now coming to uh, the consulting part, what has happened, actually two major issues, we have a good order book on consultancy, almost 2500 crore still. Uh, two major things happened. Uh, some inspection uh, 
uh, inspections were delayed, whether it is uh, uh, rails or other capital items, there are delays and uh, not, not withdrawn. So the expected pace of revenue in last quarter uh, did not match up. Also, uh, we had uh, some order uh, from uh, coal connectivity projects. I'll not name the company. Uh, but then uh, they could not acquire the land in time. They were supposed to provide land, say, by, by June or so. But uh, due to pandemic, the land acquisition process also got delayed. So those projects where the land is not there, the construction or the consultant's revenue billing does not start. So that has actually impacted the consulting revenue, and I'm sure we will recover very fast once the, uh, the, the backlog uh, of the issues gets cleared, maybe this quarter. Within this quarter, it should be better, uh, you know, visibility. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Uh, should there be more questions, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shet from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, while, you know, you clarified about the, you know, the performance of the consultancy, uh, sir, uh, as you mentioned that we have a, you know, good order book on the uh, consultancy side. So to, to uh, you know, do a double digit growth next year in consultancy, will the current order book be sufficient or we will still need some more orders to do a double digit growth next year in consultancy, sir? Uh, very difficult because the orders will keep flowing. Mm. So some orders will come for quick, uh, say, booking of revenue. To give an example, the uh, the inspection calls or the quality assurance business is basically a three-month cycle of order to uh, completion. Similarly for power management, as the rail operations pick up, we'll be back to that 40, 45 crore rupees type of fees for the existing uh, power procurement capacity. So all those things are instant uh, conversion to revenue. But the difficulties came where we had the PMC project management consultancy engineering uh, work for open area projects, rail connectivity, coal connectivity projects, where land acquisition was delayed by a couple of months in the new orders. So that affected the uh, consulting uh, revenue booking. Absolutely. Sir. So I, I think uh, looking at the scenario of today, uh, a growth of growth of 10% in consultancy looks uh, doable in 21-22. But overall, I'm saying overall company would be targeting maybe 10 to 15% or a little more, depending upon how the pandemic uh, uh, things get controlled, uh, maybe by Q1. You know, we are still not normal. Sure, sure. And, and sir, uh, 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 so whatever disruptions we saw in Q3, now most of them have it normalized and in Q4, we will see, uh, you know, much better recovery. Uh, is that uh, right understanding? Uh, you know, the, the quality assurance business execution is slightly delayed even this quarter. Okay. For various reasons. But I, I think uh, once the CapEx for 21-22 uh, increases, even the OPEX increases, uh, we'll uh, get a better uh, hand on the quality assurance revenue. So, uh, sir, this year, uh, nine months consultancy is down about 14%. Yes. Uh, any any uh, sense you would like us to give in terms of where should we end the year with? I, I think let me not preempt the Q4 results. Uh, okay. I have already given a hint that yes, Q4 may also see a subdued quality assurance uh, sure. as the rest of the year, but a very quick recovery expected on the power business uh, also uh, on the PMC works for rail connectivity projects, which is a fairly big portfolio with us. Sure, sure. And sir, lastly, uh, uh, about the solar project in RCML, uh, any update? There were a few tenders that were likely to be bid. So finally, now uh, you know, how many megawatts are going through and what is the commitment from our side that we will have to put in any clarity on that, sir? Uh, you know, there was some uh, feedback from developers, especially about the grouping of uh, uh, land parcels, uh, which were uh, classified in the tender. Uh, so we are looking at that, but uh, irrespective of that, we have, on, on first model, we have already recommended uh, the, the, the select, selected party for 299 megawatts. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the ownership where rights uh, and railways will be putting equity, 
uh, this tender is scheduled to be opened on 17th March. Mm-hmm. Also, the land along the uh, railway uh, tracks, there were some more clarifications required, so we have extended the date to 5th March 2021. 20, okay. So, sir, now as, as it stands today, what is the quantum of work, uh, total size that you know you you will be working with as consultant, and what could be the potential size that you would be you know working as a developer? Uh, okay, the, the size as developer first. Let me uh, cover where our equity um, uh, is planned uh, along with railways is only 400 megawatts. Okay. Okay. And and rest is in uh, uh, developer mode where they will put the investment on railway land. Hmm. So government is looking at uh, you know the suggestions which have come from developers and some of which have been incorporated uh, already. Okay, okay. And and on the consultancy side, uh, how many megawatts are we working with, sir? Uh, consultancy, we were almost handling 1,400 megawatts for railways. Okay, okay. But then there was a dip, you know, when all over India, the train services were curtailed. Mm. So only the fat-related demand, and there, there was almost, you can say, uh, this revenue went down by almost uh, two, one-third. Mm. So once the train operations is picking up, the power demand is picking up, so is our fees uh, realization or booking. So hopefully sure. by, uh, by April, I, I think most of the operations should see a normalcy. Sure, sure, sir. Sure. Thank you so much and best of luck for future quarters. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kamal. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sayed Javed from Reliance Securities. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. Arafat here from Reliance Security. Uh, yes. Yes, I'm, again, I'm having the same question. I just want to understand the opportunity is there for you guys for next three to four years. And what kind of other info you're expecting uh, similar in FI2022 and 23? If you can guide on that. Let me first uh, cover 21-22. 21-22, the capex is very phenomenally increased, 34% for railways alone. So I, I think we should see a uh, lot of uh, activity here itself. Then uh, what flows from National Rail Plan, that this activity of new investments, aggregation of um, uh, investments, uh, would continue till 2030. So if railways are going to scale up their investments till 2030, uh, I mean, it's reasonable to believe that companies like Rights, who are present in uh, not only railways, in highways also, and metros, Metros have also seen 20% increase. Then for the smaller cities, the uh, uh, light metro or uh, metro neo. So these things will open up opportunities for us to do consulting work. Okay. Okay. Therefore, in my previous uh, question, I said it is reasonable to expect a 10 to 5% uh, rebound in 21-22 uh, itself. Okay. Okay, fine. So, and sir, uh, my next question is on the margin front. Uh, what kind of uh, revenue mix you are expecting from turnkey segment going ahead? Is it be significantly higher compared to consultancy, or uh, what kind of margin impact which it will have on your blended margin? So, whatever turnkey projects so we have uh, executed uh, till uh, last quarter, we have maintained our margins in, as indicated to market between two and a half to three percent. That we have been able to uh, maintain. Uh, there is some execution already going on. We have already started uh, work for the new electrification lines, which we got uh, about four months back for this tendering and work is going on. So the billing for this should start maybe in Q2 of FY22. So all this uh, is lined up in such a way that without adding much manpower, People who got free from these ongoing projects would actually be then taking up uh, uh, the next uh, set of projects. So I don't see uh, much increase in the manpower from our side. But uh, again, indicative, uh, you know, around 20-25% uh, role would be played in the revenue composition by uh, this segment of business. Okay. Fine, sir. That's it for message. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Javed. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for this opportunity, sir. Uh, just harping on turnkey project business, uh, the revenue has declined by 15%. You know, when we look at the results of some of the EPC players have actually seen an increase for them. So can you sir highlight why would, uh, you know, your revenue have declined? Uh, the projects in hand had difficulty for first five, six months. So now only uh, the uh, electrification projects are nearing completion. By March, I think most of the electrification projects uh, would be over. So we still over uh, whatever has remained in Q3. So we hope to make up in uh, Q4. But in any case, turnkey is not my significant uh, portion of the uh, total revenue. Okay, and uh, the ordering uh, for the turnkey project would be now Q1, uh, is what you anticipate, sir? Uh, yes, 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 because uh, this year what we have got so far is yeah. mostly electrification projects. There's not uh, even a single project for doubling or third line. And that right. was because of the priority they have set in for uh, the current year. But uh, looking at the extension uh, planned in 2122 uh, onwards, I think turnkey would uh, look up next year onwards but within the doable capacity of the company okay which would be somewhere close to garnering 2500 kind of uh, an order inflow would that be the, the correct so ideally no 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 that on the turnkey only we already have yeah, only turnkey only turn order book is already with us you know no, no, more. Book did not materialize because of land issues in april and no, no. So based on the capacity constraint which company has, which you know you don't want to go beyond certain percentage in turnkey, so your capacity would be close to uh, getting order inflow of 2,500 to 3,000 crores. Uh, yeah, I, I yes. think that's a safe, uh, safe upper limit, I will say. And let me clarify the capacity issue. We can take more projects, but the issue is the margin is very less. So if we, we have to deploy manpower for uh, other high yield uh, projects. Do, those would be getting priority rather than just uh, reserving uh, much more for a uh, 3% margin. But we'll continue to do both. Okay. And uh, so just harping on the ordering the opportunity, uh, you know, uh, on the budget, uh, you mentioned some of the uh, uh, opportunity in Metro, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know, you, uh, earlier you had commented that uh, there were some 14 projects in Metro where you had uh, bidded for consultancy. In similar way, can you highlight something on the Metro side? As well as on uh, DFC, uh, uh, some three new lines are being looked at. Uh, where do you think uh, the consultancy would be awarded? Uh, what could be the opportunity size there? Plus, the suburban railway project was also approved some uh, two years back, you know, Bangalore suburban railway. So, is there any development on even Mumbai suburban as well? So, if you can highlight some of the progress there. Sir. We were uh, actively associated uh, in developing the Bangalore uh, suburb uh, work. Uh, we are still hopeful that uh, there should be some meaningful role going forward for us. Uh, it is yet to see, uh, you know, the execution start, but we are following up that closely. The tenders for Metro. Uh, are still going on. One one major work is still going on. We have got some uh, smaller works for detailed design for depots or stations that uh, we have got and already reported to market. Uh, we, we, are, we are soon going to share one more. Uh, I'll not comment on this beyond this today. Uh, we are soon going to uh, share some more uh, news. And uh, we, we are working on getting more orders for, from Metro as well as rail projects. Anything on DFC, sir? Dedicated pit corridor, which yes, can the tender, we have not been able to uh, make it there. You know, that was uh, a very aggressively, uh, uh, which in our opinion, we don't uh, do, uh, you know, pricing at that level. You know, when we take up a work, we believe that we should be doing in all the segments professionally and not cut corners for the client. So we, we have not got it. The DFC work is all, all, all the three DFC? This was one tender. This was one tender. Oh, one. One tender, and similarly also sign in metro as well. So the Mumbai metro consultancy, uh, you know, seven, nine, and I think five, seven, and nine lines were out, where we also participated but we did not uh, get it. There were also because of aggressive bidding, uh, uh, we have seen. 
Uh, you want to say something on this? Uh, I'll uh, yeah, I, I think the pricing by some others was uh, very aggressive. So okay. And uh, yes. uh, so when we say aggressive pricing, how what kind of a differential one can anticipate, sir? Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to maintain certain margins. Otherwise, we will not be happy if I don't maintain a margin in the uh, metro work. And doing a work at, uh, you know, substantially aggressive pricing, whether we make profit or loss, is not our way of working. And some people can do pre deadly pricing to enter uh, a segment. We do not do that. Okay, well, okay. And I'm referring to certain, uh, I will not name it, but we have seen that happening. But okay, maybe one or two projects people can do like that. Okay, but it is not something which is very prevalent uh, in the market at this point. No, there is enough work, so rather, rather putting our manpower to unproductive, uh, unprofitable uh, segments, we will rather reserve our resources for better development. And I said, I'll repeat, we are shortly going to share something. Sorry to interrupt, oh, okay. Mr. Padia. so this is the operator. I would request you to rejoin the queue. Yeah, yeah I'm just done and wishing you all the best. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Arshad. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, I would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Hardik Jain from Whitestone Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, if I heard you correctly, I think uh, in the last call, you mentioned that export uh, revenue in the Q4 could be in the range of 550 to 600 in, uh, because of Sri Lanka and Mozambique. And now, if I heard you correctly, you're saying that this could this could be around 400 crore this Q4, and the remaining can spill over into next quarter. Am I right? A few weeks, few weeks here and there. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, uh, uh, there was also some bidding for you know uh, which was to happen between amongst the three PSUs, largely three to four PSUs for railway projects. So. Uh, did we participate in any bid, anything happened, in any update that you have? Okay, and let me start with the second question uh, uh, being answered first. Uh, we did participate in the um, electrification works, and we have already reported works around uh, 700, around 700 crores of works we got on tendering basis, which has already been reported to the market. Okay. And now uh, let me uh, explain the export-related uh, issues or delays there. You know, first of all, the two orders are from different countries and on different gauges. So Sri Lanka order is on broad, broad gauge, which is being uh, readied and the first train would be shipped out uh, hopefully on 25th. We have booked a ship on 25th. There's not much issue there. There were some assembly, sub-assembly supplies because Chennai had a second spell of uh, lockdown for a few days. Uh, some delays were, ex were phased in. Cape gauge uh, related supplies to Mozambique because this is not a, a routine uh, gauge which is being manufactured in India. So those people who were selected, they had their own uh, delays in uh, starting, but now things are controlled. And uh, I think we still uh, will try to make it 400, maybe a little higher, but 600 definitely uh, looks very unlikely. But these orders may at the most still by one or two weeks because unless it is uh, you know, supported with bill of netting. I'll not be able to book the revenue, you, if, even if it is ready in the workshop. But all these orders are under progress, construction, manufacturing, sorry. Okay, and so uh, you mentioned that uh, Q, uh, QA revenue uh, was really slow this year. So this is largely because uh, CAPEX in this quarter was not very high. Uh, yes, this quarter had a subdued uh, realization from uh, inspection as well as the certain projects which we have in order book, but then the work could not start there because of uh, delays in land. Delays in? Now. That, that's being controlled now. Okay. And now, so what was QA revenue last year, what, uh, this quarter, same quarter? QA for, uh, we are 14% down on uh, Q. Uh, okay. Q, 14%. Okay, that's it. Sir. I'll just. Uh, I'll just uh, oh, oh, you are asking only QA. QA was 95. Yeah. Uh, QA was 95 last year. Yeah, 72. This is 20. Okay, this is 21. Uh, 21 compared to 20. 
challenges uh this quarter but if i look at sequentially as well the revenue improvement or scale up uh, both in consultancy and term key has been softer uh, why why i understand that the base may be uh, different but sequentially when the uh, in the in the second quarter if we have delivered a certain uh, revenue and and uh, we were coming out of the covid issue uh, we should have certainly expected a much better uh, revenue compared to Uh, compared to the September quarter, but that has not been the case for the, for us. So I'm just trying to understand. Uh, uh, most of the reasons you pointed out are external in nature, and we couldn't control that, and uh, that led to execution miss. Or uh, is there any anything internally which which also led to uh, execution uh, slower execution this quarter? No, no. Let me give you an example that if, even if you are internally fully ready to do a job. Uh, mm-hmm. Inspection quality assurance has seen a dip of 45 crore rupees in nine months. Right. Now, if even if you are ready, if the client says I am delaying, uh, you know, this supply, I am just postponing this by two months or three months. So that mm-hmm. has happened. Certain supplies were just put on hold for a couple of uh, weeks or months. So this has been happening. First six months, yes, there were disruptions, but now we face uh, the calls being uh, delayed by a uh, few weeks. But this should normalize. The revenue is not lost; it will come back to us. Yeah, that 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 I agree because uh, our orders are uh, at least from the railways are nominated orders, so we don't expect them to uh, kind of uh, um, replenish or uh, kind of go over with. Uh, it will come back to us in the subsequent quarter. Um, but but the execution looked uh, very very slow relative to second quarter. uh when when most of the challenges uh, were were uh, were at the peak you know from q1 and q2 those were the peak period of uh, covid and q3 things started moving on ground so we were expecting a, at least a sequential improvement in in in, in the execution that that did not happen um so i'm trying to understand that and second is on the margins despite uh, uh, despite our uh, uh Our, uh, our our execution being flat uh, on sequential basis i see margin dip in consultancy uh, on the sequential basis so if you can throw some light uh, on uh, what led to that uh, okay uh, you know the the main impact in consultancy came because of two components one is the quality mm-hmm. assurance which i have explained second right. is pmc work project management consultancy you know okay. whenever uh, mm-hmm. is rail connectivity coal connectivity projects uh, uh, get underway mm-hmm. then uh, the this complete chain of land availability then design approval then the supplies and the manpower being available the vehicles being uh, permitted to uh, run so this was not normal till um, uh, say as close as to diwali people were not willing okay. to go and work on projects I right. Okay. Name the states where uh, uh, even they have to report e- even around Diwali that if somebody has come from other state, he was required mm-hmm. to report uh, uh, to the authorities. So there were disruptions there. Okay. Uh, therefore, this despite being uh, around 2500 crore consulting order book, we could not mm-hmm. uh, execute this. Therefore, right. I think even even in Q4 there would be issues like the client uh, delays the inspection call by four, five weeks, six weeks. Mm-hmm. This will spill over mm-hmm. to uh, March. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, there's, And no under, uh, there's no underlying change in the structure of business or structure. Right. Yeah, I understand. And and uh, on the growth part, the uh, growth guidance which you gave that is double ten to fifteen percent overall growth. That will be on the base of FI twenty or FI twenty one. FI twenty one base is already we know uh, is a weak. So uh, is it? A very good uh, clarification. Let me tell you, uh, FI twenty one is a wasted year. Yeah, so I'm sorry for so, making it wasted. It is wasted here. 
So whatever I'm saying would be uh, seen compared with uh, previous year. Yes, I think. Okay. So, uh, I'm so, surely not going to misguide you by saying that on this lower thing I'll give you 15 percent. No way. Yeah. So, no way. so that, 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 that's what I wanted to say. Okay. If you noted my hint, I said that out of this 1400 crore, most of it is underway. So if you right, have yeah. 400 crores of exports, 1000 crore gets uh, executed in FY22. That itself gives you an idea that what's going to happen. Right, and and you say the export led growth. Uh, so beyond this 1400 crore, uh, what are the pipeline we are looking at? Uh, if you can comment on that. Yeah, yeah, that actually is uh, a, a very uh, very difficult question because there have not been any any tenders. The tenders have started rolling out now. Right. Okay. One of the tenders for 240 coaches, but mm -hmm. uh, they initially asked for expression of interest. All that has been done. But calling it as an order in process, I will say only when the tender or price has been quoted. Not even a single case because most of the countries are still struggling. Mm -hmm. In Africa, the impact is reaching now. The, the COVID uh, is still uh, troubling them. Mm -hmm. so normalcy a lot in India, but the countries where we are working, they have serious issues there. Right, and that, that must have pushed our uh, international consultancy business as well. Uh, in terms of what people are not yeah. able, people are not able to uh, go to site. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect uh, similarly with the companies having export uh, issues. Right. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Said, sir. I would request you to rejoin the queue, sir. Follow up. No, I'm, I'm, I'm already done. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the question, sir. Okay, thank you. The next question is from the line of Bajarang Bafna from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, so just to, uh, you know, understand that if we, uh, you know, see the kind of confidence that you were showing in uh, last quarter con call, uh, you know, in terms of growth and in terms of visibility, uh, you know, and now, uh, you know, what we are hearing, 15-20% kind of growth on FY20 base. But if we see the kind of allocations that has come in the budget and the kind of, uh, you know, NIP which is going to go through, and even yesterday, you know, in the parliament, uh, even, uh, you know, Prime Minister has spoken very strongly on the, uh, you know, pickup in the infrastructure side. Uh, it's a high time to deliver on that. And our channel checks are also suggesting that uh, there will be huge pickup on the ground in terms of uh, projects and all. So in, in, in that kind of environment, you know, you are very close to, you know, that machinery. And uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, last time you said 20% was the growth, you know, in last five years when uh, the execution was uh, on the government side was a bit of slow and the next five years are going to be pretty robust. And in that environment, growing double uh, will be a possibility. And so what is the precise vision of... Uh, you know, uh, you know, showing some sort of low confidence as compared to last quarter. Uh, pardon me, you know, for my ignorance, but just I sense and uh, that is why I raised this, this question. Thank you. So I don't want to run into the danger of creating over optimism. We believe in prom promising a moderate uh, a sort of scenario and delivering better than this. If these sectors give us opportunity, we will not be sitting uh, idle uh, and not searching them. Uh, what? I have indicated 15% is again looking at disruptions may still continue for next two, three months. You know, we, we are still going through the vaccination. We are still going through uh, vaccination at the uh, mass level. So the disruptions of COVID are not out. I, I'll say we are almost 75, 80% only normal. We are not able to travel uh, freely. So with this, I am still counting that normalcy is expected say, beyond June. But once the projects come in hand, a lot of work which can be done in-house, that will give us growth. And whatever is promised in budget, you know, there is a process to roll out the project. So you, you, you get work by June or September, you start working on implementation. So revenue may not fully come in FY21, even out of the uh, budgeted uh, you know, possibilities. We may get the order orders, but converting that order into revenue is possible in some components, like the quality assurance, yes, it would get converted. Like the power procurement, it would get converted immediately. Got it. And uh, sir, my second question is, uh, you know, we have a sizable cash on our balance sheet. Uh, and, uh, you know, in last three months, uh, the interest rates have come down drastically in the economy. And uh, there are little hopes that they'll rebound anytime soon because uh, there are the indications they'll try their level best to keep interest rates low in the economy. So in that scenario, 
you know our ROEs will be you know unnecessarily depressed if we keep such a huge cash reserve on the balance sheet. So any thought process on that to uh, you know improvise uh, the return on that uh, if we could write on that will be really helpful. I think uh, there were two possibilities. Uh, that if the cash is surplus uh, of shareholders, we return, we did a buyback in November. And on the investment side, uh, I'll not, uh, uh, you know, uh, commit till we actually have internal, uh, you know, processes done for that. So we will definitely be looking at uh, other possibilities to optimize the uh, investments or returns. Uh, I fully share your concern. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Shah from Lagsco Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just wanted to understand that uh, as you said, the margins are very low in turnkey projects, roughly around three percent, and the order book sits around it as a thirty seven percent share. So, how do you uh, uh, your existing order book of the turnkey projects? Are these fixed price contracts or these escalation clause? Can you comment on the pricing of it? Or, and what's the thought process on that? So, Manoj, I, I could not fully uh, hear you. What, what you're asking is that on the existing turnkey order book, uh, the margin uh, certainty of around 3%, is this the question? Yeah, or uh, basically for the, while bidding for a turnkey project, uh, are these mostly the fixed price contracts or you look for the escalation, cost escalation okay, kind okay. of oh, thing? Uh, okay, okay, I got it now. No, th this is a fixed price contract and any any deviation is passed on back to back to the uh, railways. We are only doing railway turnkey projects and therefore the margin is very less because neither our cash nor our exposure uh, to such deviations uh, is taken. So basically, you're saying 3% margin, though the margins are low, but it is protected at 3%. It's not that the cost component has gone up, so you will get a hit. Cost plus. This is cost plus, and the, the plus component is uh, almost, you can say, very carefully uh, protected by us and not subjected to any such deviations uh, in the project. Not subjected to any risk in the project. Okay. And uh, while replying earlier to some previous questions, you were saying that uh, you look more uh, turnkey, more as a uh, to utilize the bandwidth which is lying idle at the company level. Uh, uh, that's what you did for the turnkey projects because the margin is low and you want to keep it at 25% of your order book uh, target. Is that the... Uh, uh, I'll just slightly rephrase this uh, explanation if I gave incorrectly last time. You know, what we are saying that we have people who are doing similar work for a lot of other rail connectivity projects. So if same set of people can handle a little bit more and they have successfully done it for the last two, three years without adding much of manpower, we decided to pick up this 3% margin business also incrementally. So without creating any extra capacity in the company, if my people were able to do this. Uh, so therefore low business margin business was accepted. And even this new order has come through a competitive bidding. Okay, okay. And uh, also, can, can you comment on the uh, uh, regarding the uh, payment of the receivables from the government uh, on these projects? Like, how uh, how the what's the billing cycle kind of it or uh, pending dues kind of it? If you can comment on that. Oh, uh, I hope you are only asking about the turnkey projects. On the yes, turnkey, or all the government projects, whatever you are handling. How is the billing? Uh, kind of it, any receivables, delays, kind of it, if you can uh, give a, some sense of it, like uh, once you bill it, how much time it takes you on an average to you know, get the payment and so on. Kind of. Okay, let me uh, first clear the uh, uh, the turnkey where major uh, cash flow would be happening. Uh, these are sizable contracts. Here we get money in advance. About 20% cost of the project is given upfront and then reimbursed. As it reaches that uh, level, it is replenished. So we do not put any working capital from our side for these projects. So th it is not affected by, uh, uh, sorry, my cash is not affected by any of such uh, project activities. Now coming to routine business, uh, routine business of quality assurance or PNC for projects or uh, power procurement, uh, two to three months, 100 days cycle, we believe that uh, it happens in our business. Uh, this year, maybe we could see maybe 10 to 15 days uh, additionality if this happens. There have been some 
uh, delays. I mean, this is not as efficient as it was last year, but not uh, significantly worrying also. I mean, there's nothing uh, uh, to worry about also. Maybe 15, 20 days higher than uh, last year. Uh, other businesses, I think. Okay. During the current year, you have uh, like uh, receivable spending from the government uh, or uh, was a payment for uh, on time kind of it or slight? Uh, I'll not say only government of India. I'll say all the clients put together. If the average last year was around uh, 100, this year this would be around 120. But still we have 45, uh, maybe 50 days to uh, chase it and make it still uh, acceptable. So the current position is around 120 uh, days if I were to say. Have I answered, Mr. Manoj? Yes. Do you have any doubt on this? Uh, any uh, clarification? No, no. Thank you very much. Thank you. All come back. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parimal Mithani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, sir, I have uh, the question is beginning regarding the DPM guideline, which they come out in terms of MOU and, you know, they're going to rate PSUs on the basis of their performance, as well as you know, uh, return on equity, return on ROC, and all that. For what they've been talking in the media, mm -hmm. are we aware of this in terms of have the guidelines been populated to you, sir? And in terms of quarterly dividends? Uh, uh, let me tell you uh, what has been happening so far. Uh, we have an MOU system, which is signed by uh, the concerned ministry based on the negotiation, where Deepa is also a party. So there are three key financial parameters which carry a weight of 50 percent. The, the turnover increase, the profitability, the pet, and the return on net worth. So all this is already being monitored. And आप जिस व्यक्ति से बात कर रहे हैं, उन्होंने आपके कॉल को हॉल पर रखा है। कृपया लाइन पर बने रहिए। The person you are speaking with. I think there's some disruptions. Just let us wait. Yes, sir. I'm here to the line, sir. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's okay. It's okay. So, hello. Uh, Mr. Parimal, uh, are you there? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I can hear. Uh, so, I, I think uh, if any new parameter is uh, suggested, it's not yet done, not yet signed by us. But, but I'm it's sure a, that should be uh, a position to make I'm it. sure you are aware of in the media and all that the Deepam Secretary is coming on, on TV and saying in terms of performance, they're going to rate you on ROE, ROE in terms of performance-wise in terms of, you know, parameters like market cap and, you know, they want the PSUs to perform. I know they are. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, uh, I might, I, and they are talking of quarterly dividends and, you know, they are going to put, I think so, markings on the PSUs, how they perform. And uh, and so, apparently, your name has come in the, uh, one of the divestment things also. So, I just wanted to know what your thing is in terms of, have you, have the, Okay. Have you been aware of it? That's the thing. So that's why I wanted yes. to know. I think there are three issues in your point. One is that uh, the new parameters for evaluation. Yeah, sir. Uh, yes, something is going on, but officially not yet uh, you know, notified that these parameters. And they are trying to do it online, actually. Uh, I think that's where possibly maybe some delays happen. So this would be an online system of uh, submitting data and getting targets and then getting evaluated against it. Uh, as far as dividend is concerned, uh, I can say last year, I'll not comment on the current year. Current year, we have already paid one interim. Last year, we have already paid two interim dividends and one final. So typically, we are there almost three times. Maybe if government says one more time, we will see. Uh, we will move within the uh, requirement. Okay. And so secondly, in terms of your export order, uh, what is the possibility you think we'll be able to deliver on the export order in the current quarter? Or, uh, and uh, you think there are still uh, bottlenecks to delivery of that? Uh, no, no, the bottlenecks uh, have been actually handled by now. Otherwise, we thought of starting exports from Q3. Main problem came because of uh, certain sub-assemblies ordered for KPH. You know, Mozambique is its KPH. So there were some delays from the suppliers, so nothing to do with the railways production units. Now things have started streamlining. And uh, hopefully the first locomotive, hopefully by this month end, we should ship out to uh, uh, Mozambique. First, to, first set of two locomotives. So all those issues are handled, but then uh, you have a delay uh, of uh, uh, two, three months by now. And so last question, if I can ask, I just wanted to know your update in terms of uh, your subsidy REMCL. I think the numbers are quite subdued, considering, you know, they're moving more into electrification of uh, 
the from diesel to electrification of railway uh, locomotives and all so how do you see that going ahead sir because i think the railway is the largest consumer of diesel which okay. we know and and how does this help us in terms of our because we are deemed licensing and how does that revenue populate to us so going on it uh, you know we are right now handling around uh, 1200 megawatts purchase of power for railways which is 60 65% of uh, their uh, load so there is a lot still to be done within the existing electrified capacity and then what electrification is happening and you would have seen that they plan to do a whole thing by december 20 23 the entire um, broad gauge network would be electrified and this is estimated that by then the requirement of power would be around 4000 megawatts so by 20 so we get so sorry sorry just one minute sorry we see uh, the power procurement should at least double from now now why this was subdued this year because you know suddenly there was uh, uh, almost one fourth demand or maybe one third demand of power then what was needed by railways the railways were not moving except the goods uh, goods from so uh, the 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 fee we get from railways per unit purchase was directly affected by less purchase of power by railways but the business model remains intact as the railways uh, operations pick up we are getting more and more now so sorry to just i was okay. you said from 400 you are currently procuring it will go to about 4000 right megawatt you is it correct to assume so and then you do currently doing 400 it will go to 4000 right so no, no, we are doing 1200 1200 okay and, and then on that you had 0.07 paisa right basically now we get 5 paisa and uh, this will go up to then uh, 4000 megawatts the installed capacity should be around that the, the installed load would be around 4000 megawatts and so if you can just give your guidance in terms of that business or how do you see that going in next 3 4 5 years so if you can just tell us something on that thing so no, i think there is a lot of uh, enthusiasm with the with the long term view government has set through the national infrastructure pipeline they are rather added projects to it and also the national rail plan which gives you a long term investment profile till 2030 so i think there is much more definiteness in the assessment of the sector possibly than you know, what was uh, there uh, earlier Okay. and we prepare to uh, catch whatever maximum we can get out of uh, these new investments okay thanks thanks for thank you today thank you ladies and gentlemen please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question would request you to rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of rohan adavan from multi act please go ahead yeah sir thanks for the opportunity sir my first question is when you say that fy22 is likely to be 10 to 15% growth over fy20 if i look at the exports alone you know we have a 1400 crore order book and we do whatever 400 500 crores this year we will end up with around 1000 crores 900 crores in fy22 versus 500 crores of exports in fy20 so that alone should give you you know a 15% kind of growth so with the other business expected to be flat fy22 versus 20 can you just reconcile this for me sir thank you no no no, no. let me let me uh, make a comment there is no reason to such pessimism in optimism when i am saying 15% growth i am assuming exports 700 800 because that we have already said that whatever we are trying to do now 500 or 600 i cannot give a very definite number because we are still trying to see whatever maximum shipments can happen but whatever is still over it is correct to say that would be shipped in uh, 21 22 now 21 22 shipments uh, you can see from the order book uh, 700 to 1000 crore can happen it does not mean that we will not grow on the turnkey we will not be executing the turnkey contracts taken now if it is possible to grow at 20% yes we will do it but i do not want to uh, give a very high uh, indication at this stage let us wait to see the ground execution reality till june or july okay and sir the overall you know expenditure uh, buoyancy and commentary that we've been seeing uh, from the budget what uh, i mean in terms of our consultancy business uh, what you are saying is that you know this gives us a lot of opportunity for fy22 order book revenues will flow maybe thereafter but the order book possibilities for consultancy in fy22 are promising uh 
yes, that part is correct. What I have said that the whole execution would not be because typical order book average delivery is two years. Mm -hmm. But I explained during this uh, conversation that some of the consulting works like the power procurement, like the quality assurance would actually get executed within two to three months. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. there is a retro project, if there is a uh, rail project, if there is a rail connectivity project, the period could be three years. So the average ballpark number for the order book is, uh, say, two years. Got it. So then lastly, on the DFC orders where you said that, you know, we we, we uh, did not like, you know, want to go down in terms of bidding. Was that uh, the one by the private sector? And is that more and more why our consultancy order book is remaining constant or these two are not the same uh, things? Thank well, you. I'm sure we are not driven by one, one order only. But mm -hmm. I will not plunge for an order what the company cannot sustain the margins or uh, what... Uh, inputs it wants to give for a project. If we take a project, we give our uh, input by a certain standard and which we will not compromise for the sake of price. So, so this went to the private sector? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So then if I can squeeze in one last question, if you look at the budget allocations, while there is a direct, uh, while there is a uh, increase in the direct allocation, the IEBR has been reduced. Does that have any implication on us or uh, the, you know, it's the same whether it comes from this pocket or another, uh, 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 that's all. No, no, I, I think our uh, target number is how much they are going to spend, 2 lakhs, uh, some a few thousand crores. Uh, so 2 lakh is, 15, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, so that is on the uh, expenditure side, capex side, that is uh, more, uh, you know, of uh, business interest to us. And IBR etc. is their internal allocation, how much comes from the budget, IBR or others. I think that, that's none of our uh, really areas to bother about. Okay. Thank you, sir, and all the best for the coming quarters. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Rohan. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pushkar Jain from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Jan. Yes. Yeah, so so my question is already answered. It was a, 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 regarding the growth itself. So just to put it in terms of figure, we are uh, approximately planning around 2,800 crores of top line in FY22, right? Uh, let me not give a very definite. Uh, <laughs> when I said 10%, earlier I was thinking to stretch it to 20%, but yes, the range could be 10 to 20%. Uh, and safer way would be to see a double-digit uh, growth is definitely visible in 21-22. Right, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dean Shah from SSPL Global Trade Banks. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for the question, sir. Uh, Thank you. Sir, uh, looking at the nine month financials, I'm seeing that there is uh, some expense of something like uh, on the purchase expense, something like 75 crores. And we have no, hardly any export revenue. So, does it mean that we have already booked the expenses for the export, whatever is going to happen? And uh, we are going to, when we book the revenue at that time, the margin are going to be much higher than 20-22%, which are going to be actual margins, but quarter by quarter it will differ that way. Once uh, again, you have to see the purchase and change in inventory together. Okay. Basically, for, uh, I think this offsets the uh, numbers, one is positive, one is negative. Uh, okay. If you, are, if you are looking at the uh, consolidated statement, mm -hmm. uh, let me check yeah. out last year's number. 7530 is positive purchase and change in inventory is 7456. Yes. Okay. And that's minus. Now, in the in the current um, uh, nine months, 60, I'm sorry, three months, 6465 is the purchase for export. Okay. And then change in inventory uh, is 64. So minus one is plus, one is minus. Okay. So we will book it only when the revenue matching the revenue is available and not otherwise. Uh, okay. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. My question is answered. All the best. Mr. Shah, sorry. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. Just wanted to check with you on the export front. You know, the government has been very vocal about 
um, you know, PSC was uh, looking to enhance the export business. So, anything uh, that we are working on, uh, can you share some insights? Uh, you know, in terms of because this two order would be executed in, let's say, in this quarter, next quarter, but then after which we may not have the order uh, uh, order execution. So, any order in visibility? Uh, when some discussion is already going on with some country, if you can highlight size, any new segment that you are looking to enter uh, apart from the locomotive and passenger coaches, that would be helpful. Sorry to interrupt Mr. Kapadia, so there is a disturbance coming from your line. I would request you to mute your line while the management answers your question. So, Harshit, uh, there is definitely uh, a move to increase exports. and then. Uh, making locally uh, all those uh, issues we are addressing. Uh, this order is very important because first time a KPH order is going from India. Once this shipment goes and works well in those countries, we will have a lot of new customers. So don't worry if the new order, uh, because people are not traveled, people are not put the tenders to uh, uh, international community. So uh, there is a lot of uh, you know accumulated demand which I hope to see. Uh, rolling out uh, in next uh, one or two quarters, and th there's one tender which we are looking at for 240 coaches. But I will not be able to tell the country and uh, details, but yes, there is one broad gauge 240 coaches tender which we are under discussion. Now, this export push definitely there is potential because what we are exporting is very very less compared to the market size. So there was a need to increase the product shelf or uh, product uh, variety. That's what exactly we have done this year. We have added Cape Gage uh, locos, coaches, and uh, wagons to our uh, portfolio. And I'm sure this will also give us uh, growth uh, going forward. Oh, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gotham, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, My question is regarding the 10 year strategy for rights. So when we look at long-term trends which are impacting rights, one big plus is infrastructure is always going up, infrastructure spends. On the flip side, sir, uh, you know, renewables are taking over, so some of our energy-based clients, they may be much smaller when we look at the long term. And second, sir, there's a lot of uh, disinvestment plans, uh, clearly. And, you know, with that, uh, the margins can also possibly go down if you look at some 10 years, 15 years. Uh, so I just want to hear your thoughts on, you know, how this will probably impact rights in the long run. And you know how, how, uh, what plans are there to mitigate this, or how you plan to diversify from this? Well, I think uh, uh, let me uh, first uh, possibly handle the easiest one. Uh, on the disinvestment side, uh, you know we we are not the ones to really uh, decide or comment. I mean we'll uh, have to wait for the government announcements in this regard. And as far as the sectors are concerned, they have said railways are in the infrastructure sector now. Within railways, which company? Uh, would be taken up and uh, all that we, we are also uh, you know, awaiting as uh, you would be seeing. Now coming back to uh, the growth, the segments which Rice has added, we started as a consultant. Within consultancy, we added the uh, portfolio of highways, airports, metros, uh, now ports, uh, metros outside India we are doing, Mauritius metro we are doing. Then we started a locomotive exports, then leasing in India, then power management. So whenever we find that there is a reasonable, uh, you know, safe business model, even out of consultancy, we have been going to those areas. Immediately, there's nothing to really uh, share with this forum right now. But we will be uh, looking at the possibilities which will emerge in infrastructure sector in India going forward. The capex increase in 21-22 is very high actually, with 35% increase in budget directly from budget. For government projects, and then uh, of course the NIP looks at uh, private participation, state participation. That is additional. So there's lot to happen in this sector. We have to remain relevant. We have to remain updated. We have to remain remain competitive. So in all these areas, I think this company is alive to the uh, situation, and uh, hopefully that should create value, whether in whatever ownership uh, rights remains. If the business model is intact, these guys are intact. I think the value will remain relevant. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so one little clarification. I think some of the contracts which we bid, some of them come from direct PSU companies and some come from ministries also. Uh, so, sir, uh, the ministries part, I guess, will not be affected even 
uh, even if the ownership changes i guess ministries will still be with the government uh, uh, could you tell me what percentage comes from the ministries and what comes from the psu company form of business it's almost two third one third two third is nomination and one third is uh, tender but once everything will come through tender we are even getting on through tenders we are very shortly going to share one more uh, uh, you know development which has come through uh, the tender it's a government project so it's not true that if we go through competition we will not get work Uh, yes, only mode of selection. Uh, earlier for government, it was easy to give a nomination; they were doing it. But if the tendering route is there, we will be uh, competing and hopefully getting our share of business as well uh, in the future. Uh, there is no reason to uh, worry about the private sector not giving. There are locomotives of rights which are working with private sector. We are doing. Uh, we have done work for IPPs for their rail connectivity. We are doing work for port connectivity for private uh, ports. So uh, I think the portfolio of rights. is wide based in terms of ownership of projects uh, of the clients as well as our services yes sir. yes thank you sir that clarify thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shreyans mehta from ecuri security please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity so two questions from my side one given that you know this year we we'll, we have you know revenues coming in from uh, turnkey and uh, to an ex- you know majority from the consultancy part and next year we'll be having more from exports and turnkey so do you see any pressure on the margins that's number 1 and number 2 sir can you give you know we had uh, planned in capex of roughly 250 to 300 odd crores so what's the status out there uh, okay let me uh, start with the first one sure the the export has a reasonably good margin mm-hmm. and that is certain the orders are there and these orders are under implementation now so you know one should feel really happy about that at least this component is definitely there then add on to this what i indicated turnkey then consulting growth so maybe maybe uh, the overall situation could be much better than possibly what has been guardedly um, uh, made out and i think i have said what i wanted to say okay uh, uh, coming back to the capex yes we have uh, <coughs> uh, done some uh, one second uh, let me just get these details so this year the capex has not been done much because of requirements subdued uh, we still have uh, provision for locomotives purchase for leasing 80 crore rupees so this is the pending amount so we have invested 20 odd crores right 100 odd crores was to be invested i guess so that's another that's another okay okay that is for the locomotive workshop for maintenance of our locomotives as well as okay. locomotives of likes of sail and ttp now that we are trying to uh, you know rethink uh, that was 150 crore rupees we we'll try to optimize this maybe at 1/3 by okay. locating one of the facilities in our own factory uh, wagon kulti factory that thing sort of we just put on hold okay okay and sir uh, 200 odd crores was on the office building so any status out there uh, yeah we we, ha- we have started work in uh, one uh, uh, you know important place in calcutta that would mm-hmm. be getting our north east and eastern uh, part requirement uh, that is going on the work has started Okay, so so entire two hundred crores uh, has been invested, or uh, you know how much has been invested? That is for three four places. We we want to do something in Lucknow. We are not yet started. Okay. We want to do something in Delhi. We have just purchased few uh, uh, assets. Maybe I think ten fifteen crores here. Yes, fifteen crores. Thirteen crores we have uh, invested in uh, Delhi because closer to our office we have acquired some uh, property. Okay. We have a land in Lucknow. Yeah. but we are not going to go for construction so that that portion would not be spent even next year uh, may, maybe next year also we may not do it we will just wait and see how to optimize this so 200 crores would not be spent even in 21 22 fully yes okay okay so 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 how much would be you know we might have invested till date in this office building an approximate number approximate would be just just maybe 15 15 crores so advance payment would have gone 15 okay okay 